Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number four of this NHL 22 Newfoundland Growlers Draft of Glory franchise mode here on my channel. If you guys have missed any episodes up to this point, head up into that top corner. And if you do enjoy, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and hit notifications to never miss these uploads. So, today we get into the 2024-25 season. Right now we're still sitting in 2023-24. If you guys missed the last episode, again, go back and check it out. But... Today, well, I mean, Yerky Pitkin had one of the best rookie seasons I've seen in a while, although he did get taught by Matthew Savoie, who, of course, we were unable to select because we did not win a lottery. So, today, can we win a lottery? That is the question, because yes, we've been landing in the top three, but we're expected to land in the top three, and ah, Ottawa! Ah, the Senators are going to get to pick... Not only are they going to get to pick, but they already have a stockpile of defense. Like, they, they're even better than us as far as defensive prospects go, but we're going to be picking number two. So, a little bit annoying, but what do you do, right? So, it's very unlikely that Ottawa actually takes, you know, like a star forward like Berkeley Catan. They're very likely going to go with Aaron Kiviaru, um, which sucks because he's an amazing franchise offensive defenseman. But, you know, we can settle for Berkeley Catan. I will take him. Um, we don't have a ridiculously, like, overstockpile of playmakers at this point. Although, yes, a sniper or two probably would be nice. You know, a high elite playmaker, I'm not going to complain about. Berkeley Catan looks amazing, and I would really like to get him into the team. The other guy I'm really hyped for is Byron Borowski, who is a Polish sniper, but, again, just looks fantastic. Um, we will be taking him in the second round, and the rest of these guys, well... We'll see. I don't actually know how good they're going to be. So, for retiring players this year, we see Brett Burns, Zach Parise, Tyler Bozak, Derek Broussard, Alex Goligoski, and many, many more call it quits here this year. As far as goalies go, Dubnik, Talbot, Neuverth, Stalock, that's kind of it. Um, but not a bad retiree class overall. And guys, something I totally just about missed was that Tyler Bozak retired, and he's on our team. So, we might potentially get a scout there in Bozak, but... Oh, and Derek Ryan also retired, so that's, uh, I mean, it makes sense. He had a crazy AHL season to end off his career um, with two, like, 69 or 67 and 71 point seasons. So, yeah, we see a couple uh, players retire there from our team. So, again, not a problem. Burns becomes a coach. Uh, we do get a scout in Bozak, so that's actually interesting. And I don't believe, oh, no, we did lose uh, Ross Marsh to coach retirement. So... Um, we're just gonna continue simming on here. I don't really feel like doing draft interviews today, to be completely honest with you guys. So, looking at our current team and our current situation, we've got some really good young defensemen. We look down in the system and buy potential, and Bush, Morozov, Nicholson are a great kind of top three to have. Uh, we've got some good centers, too, in Geeky Fantilli, Pitkinen, and yes, we are gonna be selecting more centers, but the reason being is because we are going to be Deferring those centers off to the wings very likely once they start to develop obviously they'll get to play down the middle in the AHL or in junior or wherever else they're playing but the second they get up to our top six with Newfoundland that's when they're going to start getting moved over to the wings so with that in mind let's get into this entry draft I would love if the Senators would pass on Kiviaru I doubt they do that which yeah exactly so it sucks because he's a franchise talent but there's literally nothing else we can do so we will, you know, take our loss in not getting the franchise defenseman, and we will go with Berkeley Catan. So, he's going to be our second overall pick, our highest ever selection, and a really decent player at that. So, I'm excited to see him in action with the Growlers. I think we're going to give him probably one more year in junior, just to really develop into something special and let our team develop a little bit more. Yes, 104 points is fantastic, but I think he can do even better, so... I think this year we will actually end up holding off a little bit. So, instead of taking... Yeah, some of these other guys were pretty good, too. Don't get me wrong. I would have loved to have taken, like, a dozen of these guys. But there's not really a lot we can do here. So, uh, Volkov. Nice pick. And Tuparainen. Also a nice pick. Again, um, kind of undersized. Not, not super small, but kind of undersized players. And with pick 34, we are not going to miss on the low elite... Byron Borowski, let's see how good he actually is, I'm going to say probably about a 60, and okay, he's a 64, so not bad, he's got really decent X-Factors at that too, so 
Um, yeah, I mean, you can't really complain about that. He's got one T, he's got magnetic snipe, make it snappy, close quarters. He is a shooter. So hopefully we'll see that shooting develop a little bit more over the next couple of seasons. And on to pick 67. Oh, DeMello. Oh, wow, we missed on that. Um, shoot, <laughs> I should have taken Colin DeMello, apparently. So that's a big old draft whiff. Um, but it happens, right? Metropolitan, you know, not bad. Uh, Kolesnik, not bad either. These are actually really decent second rounders. So, um, apart from that, who else is actually really good in here? That's about it for the second round. Okay, and on to the third. And in the third round, I cannot pass him up again. Medium elite talent here. Ashton Delmore, I'm really hoping within five years he can develop. And he's 51 rated. Okay, so nothing crazy, but again, we'll take it. He's going to be one of our top three picks, and that's not terrible. All right, so over to pick number 100 now. And with the 100th overall pick, who are we taking again? I want to say, is this one a goalie? This might be our goalie pick. Yes, it is. Okay, so um, there's two goalies here back to back. I want to take the bigger one in Fleischmann. Um, soft spoken, but... Uh, seems like he'd handle professional environment well. I think he's going to be the slightly better goalie. So we're going to take Fleischman, take the risk on him potentially being a medium starter, and he's not. Nice. Okay, so he is a medium elite, 59 rated. Not bad. All right, so our first four rounds of picks actually go extremely well. I'm happy with those. Um, we get all medium or some form of elites um, with our players. Shirikov was good. Valentenko was good. You know, th this is not, this is a really good draft, actually. I, I'm surprised. I knew it was going to be okay, but wow, yeah, like really decent draft class here. So, on to pick number 133. We're going a little off the board. I'm going to take a risk on Kirill Yaskin. He is 19, but if he turns out, and he is a low elite, nice, okay. He turns out to be a 54 rated two way forward. So, not bad. Hopefully, we can develop him properly. Um, but we are going to give him probably another year in Russia before we even sign him. So keep an eye on Yaskin. He'll be an interesting one. And next up, we've got Wes Shattenkirk, who I'm really hoping, again, is going to be a low elite. And this time he's not. Okay, he's a low top six playmaker. Again, a left winger, but not terrible. So over to 199 for the last pick of this draft. And who are we taking? Uh, I think we're going way off the board here. So... Who did I have pinned? I think it's Seppinen, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go with Toppy Seppinen. I know he's way off the board. He's literally 100 picks off, but I'm really hoping that he is a low elite, and he's a low 9. Okay, and he's a left-wing sniper. Okay, so could be a little bit better, but again, you know, we'll take it. I don't think there's going to be too much other talent remaining in this draft, to be honest. So let's, like, when I look, you know, maybe Klo, maybe Foot, but again, I... I just don't have a good feeling about the seventh round. Usually, usually when there's like a really good seventh round prospect, you'll notice them. Be like, oh yeah, okay, this guy has like a three year ETA at 19 years old in the seventh round. He probably should get picked up, right? Like things like that. But anyways, we're gonna sim the rest of the draft. I don't really care if there was anybody crazy in there, but overall, you know, it's a pretty decent draft for this team. Still, we get Katon, Borowski, Delmore, Fleischman, Yaskin. Those first five picks are all hopefully going to hit NHL level at some point in their career. So that's it for this draft. Let's get into the re-sign phase, free agency, all that good stuff. We do have some players to re-sign this year, though. And we have some coaches that need re-signing as well. So Deshesny needs a contract. Same with Barkov. Same with uh, Corius. All right. Um, we now have, what's his name here? He should be in here, and I don't think he is. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we actually got the return on um, Tyler Bozak, which kind of sucks, because he was one of the few players where I was like, sweet, okay, we're going to have an extra scout, and I think because our scouting's full, we don't actually get the opportunity to sign him, so... You know, it is what it is, but these other scouts, these amateur scouts are all going to be really good, and I'm okay with re-signing them instead. So, 
All right, um, we get to restricted free agents. We only have Drew O'Connor. Everybody else pretty much is unrestricted or not signed. So our best player here, our best forward anyways, is Yerky Pitkinen right now. And by his senses, puck skills, and defense, I think he could very well be getting a defensive X factor coming up here. Along with um, probably like Deakin, like puck on a string or ankle breaker or something like that. Because at 86, he's going to be getting three X-Factors, if I'm not mistaken. So yes, indeed, he will get two more X-Factors here pretty quickly. Um, so I'm excited about that. We'll add those on to him. Um, Connor Geeky doesn't really need one. And uh, we could give Dominic Cahoon one more as well. So I think this offseason is going to see Taylor Nicholson get the C. Um, Dominic Cahoon wants five years. I'm going to offer him five years at six and a half million because that'll take him until he's 33 and I think a six and a half million dollar Dominic Cahoon is actually a pretty decent contract for this team we'll re-sign Drew O'Connor for whatever he wants pretty much um, and I do believe that this year is the year where we will see some decent um, free agents and players like such so yeah we'll sign Kitan as well but uh no, I think we'll, we'll hold off. We'll see if he can put up a better season. And regardless, he'll get signed next year. But Dean Kukan will re-sign. Troy Stetcher, I would like to re-sign. Um, $2.5 million for a year isn't too, too bad. Um, I'm surprised Ruta, Lebushkin, and like a whole bunch of these guys even want contracts still. It's kind of funny because they're probably like pushing NHL level and probably should be playing in the NHL but instead they're taking two-way contracts so I'm not going to complain about it but I'm just saying they probably should be a little bit higher valued than that um what's his name Brad Hunt here wants to re-sign I don't know if we necessarily have the roster space to re-sign a guy like Brad Hunt now at this point in his career um because Delmore is going to get a lot more games in the USA this upcoming year or a lot more ice time because um, 16 minutes a night isn't crazy for a defenseman so apart from that uh i feel like we should be playing yaskin in the ahl but i'm just gonna let him develop same with bass i think jared bass actually had a, a pretty decent season in the usa league um lou black same kind of thing 72 points that's really good and I think we're just going to sign Byron Borowski here this year. So offer him pretty much a max deal. I guess we can re-sign Brad Hunt then. Uh, we'll offer him $3 million for the next season. And we're not going to go overkill with any other contracts really yet. Um, just until we figure out what this kind of free agent class is looking like coming up here. So if guys like Iofalo or other undrafted free agents are available then we will definitely push for them but we'll see what happens so all right we get mario deshesny we should get most of our coaches yeah we get barkov we don't get Koreas. that's okay and now we get all the scouts <laughs> and all right we get no sec we don't get kukan uh, Stetcher, Georgiev, Lubushkin, O'Connor, Ruta, Hunt, Copley, Luff, Cahoon does resign, Borowski, nice, okay, that's good, that's, that's really good, apart from, I believe it was just Kukan that didn't sign, um, so we'll offer him, I don't know, like 3 million, or 2, 2 million, sorry, that should be enough to get him to resign, and I just want to double check that this free agent class is the one that I'm thinking it is, as far as... Yeah, Aya follows in there. Okay, so we'll want to pursue him for sure. Apart from Aya follow, um, is for Hagee undrafted? No, he's a Leafs player. Tyler Johnston we could go for. So yeah, there's like decent free agents coming up here. Um, obviously, there's no Artemi Panarin, who's a UFA or a undrafted player, but um, most of these other goalies are going to be drafted too. Konovalov doesn't count. Kevin Lankinen's actually not a bad goalie, but um, 
How about any like decent potential players? Doesn't really look like it yet. So, okay. So we'll definitely keep some money open. I'm gonna say probably about 15 to 20 million, right around that mark. So um, I think a guy like Frank Kuz, we can offer a one year, like five or $6 million cap eater contract, um, just because that's the only way we're gonna avoid salary cap inflation. So yeah, let's go with about, 19 million to sign Johnston and I follow is probably enough. So let's let's go with seven million dollars there. And let's go to free agency. Alright, so I assume we'll get Kukan as well. We do. Alright, perfect. And we don't necessarily need an AHL assistant coach. And we are probably gonna go through a coaching change here coming up soon too. Uh, simply because all the players are just starting to absolutely despise our coach, which I find is really funny. Um, but, you know, we're, that's just what we're going to have to do probably. So uh, keep an eye on Katan. We're going to watch him develop, hopefully. And apart from that, let's hopefully land Ayafalo and Johnston. So um, Ayafalo got two teams interested in him. Oh, Marcia is undrafted too, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Ooh. I might have messed up a little bit, but that's okay. All right, so let's go with Ayafalo. Offer him for the next three years, we'll offer him nine million bucks. Maybe nine and a half, actually. I think nine million is probably her. Let's go 9.25 for the next three years. I know it's a bit of a strange contract, um, but Marcia So is another guy that I would love to sign to just like a two year deal. So if we go nine plus eight, eight that's 15 million right there and then is johnston still available yes he is and we're gonna be pushing it here so we'll offer him a two-year 5.5 million dollar deal as well i don't know who is and isn't gonna sign these um, but i would love to get all three of those players that we just pursued we're not taking coach kaniami for a trade we, again, we just can't make trades, but we get Johnston, we get I have follow, and we don't get Marsha. So, okay, so let's just hold off for a second here. Let's, uh, can we even release a player? I don't know if we can. So I messed that up, um, which sucks because I would love to get Marsha. So. And I don't think that's going to be the case. Oh, man. Okay. So, yeah, there's no way around this. We can't trade players. We can't do anything like that. So, the only way around it would be to trade a player. And I should have probably released a couple of our really crappy players. But, again, there's nothing I can do about it at this point. So, we're going to lose Marcia So, unfortunately. But we still get Johnston and Aya Follow, which were the two players that I set out to kind of pursue. Um, and yes, we do have too much money available here still. So that kind of sucks. Um, yeah, there's just, there, unfortunately, there's no way around this. So let's, uh, let's him to the next season. And well, yeah, we'll lose Marcia So, but there's nothing we can do about it. All right, so just looking at our lineup this year, I think we are going to have to make a coaching change. Um, and not only that, but we're also going to give Taylor Nicholson the C. Um, I think he's quite deserving of it at this point, and really I have nothing against doing that. So um, this is the group we're looking at, but we definitely need a coaching change and we need some roster moves with this team. All right, so I kind of have my roster set up now the way I want it. And oh my god, I did not realize how many forward coaches we have. All right, um, we are very likely going to be kind of cleaning house here on some coaches because that is a little bit ridiculous. Um, a head coach for $3 million, 66% scheme fits actually pretty decent. Um, but I don't know if we necessarily need that. I'm looking for like 70-ish percent. Uh, this is not great. <laughs> 
So maybe we do target this top end kind of coach, um, just because I'm looking at it like I, I don't know how else we're going to really manage a system that works like this. Um, Maxime Leclerc might be the guy that we have to go with. Um, I think we have enough budget. Maybe not quite, but we're close. So we'll offer him the contract. We'll head back to our coaches. Um, we'll fire Eric Dwyer for now. Promote Poulin to interim. And probably fire McGillrath just based on the fact that he... Um, He's also an offensive coach, which we probably need a defensive coach instead. So we'll do that. We'll promote Barkov to assistant NHL coach for now, which I'm okay with. Um, and then I just I just want a defensive coach. That's all I want. So. Maybe not an NHL associate, but an assistant instead. Um, let's see, I'll go with Latang. That works. Again, I'm really hoping we get these coaches just based on the fact that we need these coaches. So, um, change Barkov around a little more there. So, okay, let's advance a little bit. Um, hopefully, get these coaches signed and sorted out. And all right, we do get Latang. Please tell me we get our other coach. And we don't get Leclerc. Great. Yeah, that's fantastic now, isn't it? Okay. We're going to offer him like three million bucks, maybe even three and a half. Please take it. Okay, come on. We're paying you like $600,000 a year more. Come on. That's a lot. And there we go. Okay, so we do get Leclerc. Took a moment, but that's okay. I think the system's going to look a little bit better because of it. And I like where our coaching staff is sitting now. Apart from all the forward coaches in the... Um, in the AHL, but that's okay. So, Poulin... Oh, wait, no. Sorry, not Poulan. Barkov will get moved down to the AHL Associate again. And then we'll move Poulan back up to NHL Associate. Okay, so looks good to me. Um, let's see how the roster looks now. All right, so this is kind of the team we're looking at. The scheme fit isn't perfect, but it's in the right direction at least. So I don't know how long um, we're actually going to hold on to this coach for, but we'll see. Uh, we definitely need certain players to start developing a little bit more here, but a guy like Morozov or Bush, again, I have some faith in them, in them that they're going to be really good players eventually. Even a guy like Tersumbayev, we're just like loading up the rookies on defense here this year, so it's probably going to be a pretty awful year as far as defensive capabilities go, but the forwards should be able to come back and help a decent amount. They're actually a pretty solid forward core here. And I'm quite interested to see what guys like Pitkinen, Ayafalo, and other players like that can do. So, Ayafalo's actually got a fairly decent shot. He might actually have the best one on this line, so we're going to throw him on the other wing instead. Let Pitkinen continue passing. And we need to add some X-Factors to these guys. Like, Ayafalo needs X-Factors. Cahoon needs another one. Uh, Johnston needs a couple. Like, there are guys in here that need one or two X-Factors. So... Um, that's where we're at right now. That's how this team's looking. And the miners are, I want to say significantly worse, but I don't know if they're that much worse there. They're all right. Um, we're going to let Borowski develop, obviously. Um, maybe we play Nosek over, yeah, we're playing Nosek at center over Borowski. And we're going to let him just shoot the lights out, hopefully. So that is the goal here. Um, I really want Borowski playing power play time, preferably just because he can shoot the puck um even if the power play is just atrocious oh my goodness all right so brendan Dillon definitely needs to come out of there but yeah there's lots of guys that just cannot play um special teams or minutes like that down in the system which is too bad interesting group um but that's okay we just need some kind of decent 
I mean, yeah, sure, the penalty kills are fantastic down in the minors, but the power play is not so much, and yeah, I need to get more of these guys into the lineup too, now that I'm looking at it. Alright, so yeah, that's the group we're going with. I'm going to play with a minus one on the second line, because I think they're good enough. But I really did want Thomas Rodin in this lineup, just because he is um, a low elite and could potentially develop still. Um, Yuri Vorobyov is looking really good, I'm excited for him, and... Without too much further ado, we're going to get into the season sim here. i got to get all my scouting done and things like that, but overall, you know, this team's looking pretty good. I think we should just jump in, add those X factors to certain players, um, such as Aya Follow, who, again, will get four X factors. Um, so looking at his style of play, puck skills are definitely a strong suit in his play, uh, all 90s there. So probably passing and puck on a string for him. Along with that... Uh, his defensive awareness, so like his stick checking, so stick him up could be good, and probably a body checking X factor as well, just by the looks of it, I think those would be kind of the ones that he deserves to get, um, because yeah, he's a, he's a good player, there's no doubt in my mind about that, so let's toss puck on a string, uh, tape to tape, I don't want truculence, I want stick him up there and or maybe yoink actually yoink probably would make more sense yeah and then um maybe shooting too so yeah let's let's add make it snappy onto there as well okay so that's ixl Alex Iafalo, not Ix Alifalo. <laughs> oh man, mixing up my words. Uh, Yerky Pitkinen. I actually was thinking about calling him Beef Yerky, which is hilarious because he's way undersized. So Beef isn't exactly the right uh, nickname for him, which is, I think is hilarious. But um, he deserves a couple more X factors too, based on defensive play more so. I want to say. So again, I think he could use. I think shutdown would actually be a really good one for him, just based on the way he plays. And along with that, um, he's got puck on a string too, without a doubt. He's just, he, he's he got really good hands. So we'll add those to Pitkinen, because Pitkinen's looked amazing as a rookie, 66 points. Uh, Johnston needs a couple. At 85, he gets two, I believe. Oh, no, at 85, he gets three. Okay, yeah, so. Um, Johnston, actually, I did not check his stats. Let me double check that. Tyler Johnston is quick. He's skilled, and he's got a four-star shot as well. So let's give him Schnipe. Um, probably wheels, because he is fast. Schnipe wheels and deking, so probably ankle breaker. I think ankle breaker is the right one for him. Um, simple abilities, so yeah, ankle breaker. Um, snipe and what was the last one? Wheels, yeah. Ankle breaker, snipe, and wheels for Johnston. I think is correct. I think that makes sense because of how he plays. And then apart from that, Cahoon, Fantilli, those guys. I mean, Cahoon gets one more. Um, because he's bumped up to an 85 overall now, so um, what I'm going to give him is skating as well. I think he's extremely fast, but um, I'm actually going to give him elite edges instead. Wheels might be something we hand him down the road, but at this current point in time, I really like where the team's at. Obviously, our defense needs more development before they get any X-Factors, although I'm looking forward to the day that happens. Because, you know, a guy like Tersumbayev is getting better chemistry than everybody else based on the fact that he has X-Factor. So, that's what we're looking at. That's the team. Um, I'll be back with you guys once we simulate the whole season, and hopefully it goes well. And along with that, I totally did not show you guys the draft class. So, Marcos Lees, um, undersized, probably playmaker. Yep, definitely playmaker on the Thunderbirds. Yep. He's playing alongside, I don't know if he's playing alongside anybody necessarily. Brady Downey looks good. Grayson MacGyver looks good. Jordan Gavin, we know, is good. 
And I don't know how this draft class is going to look. It's kind of interesting that a guy like Nathaniel Finley is ranked at number 5 down at pick number 20. So yeah, interesting group coming up here. We'll see what we're looking at as we get through the season sim, and I will let you guys know, but I'll be back with you guys once we are pretty much done the season sim. And this season, we're looking at 92 offense, 88 goal or 88 defense, and 82 goaltending. So pretty decent looking team overall here. All right, guys. So this season, the Newfoundland Growlers would manage to put up a 39, 40, and 3 record for 81 points, a sixth place finish in the Atlantic, and honestly, not that bad a season. The only thing that sucks is that there's a pretty decent looking draft class coming up so we aren't really going to land anybody crazy but we finished 25th which is quite a bit higher than I was expecting to it's not even really it is in the bottom 10 but it's like just barely in the bottom 10 so I'm actually quite impressed with how we did this year um it wasn't an insane season by any means, but, you know, Yerky Pitkinen put up 78 points along with uh, Connor Geeky. So those guys were just tearing it up. They did fantastic. And along with that, I mean, Ayafalo also put up 73 points in his uh, first season with the team, which is great. Uh, Fantilli looked really good, apart from being a pretty hard minus there. He might have been the worst plus minus on our whole team. Um, and yeah, that was the case, so that's unfortunate, but we'll have to start trying to solve that. Uh, Taylor Nicholson took a bit of a drop, which is okay, because the forwards were really going to work this year. Um, we had to bring Silvergard up for a couple games, and he didn't do very good, unfortunately, in most of those games. Copley was okay, and Gurjev was our, easily our best goalie. So, looking at the rest of the league here... Um, for the entire league, John Gibson would win 47 games. That's insane. Cal Pedersen would win 42. Konovalov was good for uh, Ottawa this year, which is crazy. Okay. Askarov is insane. Yeah, there's some uh, some good goalie performances, but oh, Harrison Jones looks so nice now as a goalie too. Yep. I, I got grilled on uh, a couple of comments for that, which, I mean, I, I don't... I... I totally get why you guys are grilling me for that but hey look at seattle like danila yurov playing fantastic for them bork i've uh ivan roshnashenko you know lots of guys here had really good years so um unfortunately we weren't able to see um what's his name berkeley katan in action this year which might have made a difference but you know, who knows? Dougie Hamilton, yet again, leads all defensemen in scoring. Somebody's going to have to knock him off of that pedestal eventually. But, oh, your top scorer this year only puts up 100 points, Artemi Panarin there. So, he is on one year left, so keep an eye on that. He's probably going to be wanting a lot of money, and we're going to be trying to get him. So, um, that's something to just, you know, keep in the back of your mind. We might try to go get Artemi Panarin next episode, but... Let's uh, let's get through a bit more of this. Um, the seasons are done. By the looks of it, yeah, our, our AHL team didn't do all that spectacular. Yeah, 34, 35, and 13 puts them in a sixth place finish in their division and definitely not in a playoff spot in the AHL. They finish ooh, 25th as well. So, um, yeah, not, not a crazy good season from them. Not bad, but not over the top either. Borowski only scores 26 points. He grows four ratings, but not a spectacular first year from him either, unfortunately. So that's where we're sitting at the current moment. Um, I want to just see how our progress reports are looking because unfortunately we didn't see all that much growth this year from the team. Like Geeky, Fantilli, those guys obviously grew a bit. Bush got a little bit of growth. Um, that was it, unfortunately. Moroza did not grow at all in the system, though. Um, Peacepinen looking really good. Delmore grew a bit. Fleischman grew a bit. Yaskin grew a bit. Okay, so all our guys that we pretty much just drafted grew a decent amount. Um, Berkeley Catan, what the heck? How, 92 points in 61. So he played less games. Put up less points. Okay, that's oh, that's not great. I was really hoping he'd be like an 82, 83 rated coming into camp, um, but unfortunately he's not. So we're gonna have to 
we're going to have to start him lower in the lineup than I was hoping, which kind of sucks. So, yeah, you look at our AHL team, it's like all undrafted apart from like our couple players that we've drafted so far. So, um, yeah, that's where we're sitting right now. You know, the team's not in bad shape, um, but it could be better as well. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's just how we're looking right now. All right, guys, so this year in the playoffs, the Anaheim Ducks would win yet again. I believe this is their second time in the last three years. It might even be back-to-back. No, Vegas won last year, so Anaheim would have been. Yeah, Anaheim's won two out of the last three cups, so that's pretty impressive. Um, And then Stockton is able to win the AHL, or the Calder Cup, um, playoffs there. All right, and this year, as far as award winners would go for the NHL, we would see Panarin win the Art Ross, as well as the Hart. Hamilton would win his third straight Norris. Uh, Kuznetsov would win the Lady Bing, Svechkov would win the Calder this year, Drysdale would win the Conn Smythe, Gibson would win the Vesna, as well as the Jennings with, I guess, yeah, just Gibson would win the Jennings. Uh, the Masterton would go to Olesiak this year, Volu for Ottawa would win the Jack Adams, Ryan O'Reilly would win another Selkie, Panarin would win the Ted Lindsay, and Ovechkin would win the Rocket. All right, so just to show you guys kind of what we're looking at for the draft class, I mean, Obviously, it would be nice to finish higher than where we're currently sitting, but there are some pretty decent looking players throughout this draft that we might be able to get our hands on. Um, First off is Aiden Wild, who looks like a one-year ETA, but a really good looking defenseman, lots of X-factors and such. Um, Same though with this Vyacheslav Ivanov, so I think he's going to be a power forward, but I might be wrong just based on his physicality is not there. He might be a sniper, Um, so he looks really good too, and then... Gamble's a fairly high rated or a high ranking goalie, but this Grand Pierre guy, Marcel Grand Pierre, looks absolutely fantastic. So I'm really hoping we can land him too, potentially. He's going to be probably around pick 30. We'll end up taking him. Um, so yeah, pretty decent looking draft class. I would love to win the lottery, though. Obviously, there's a franchise winger there. Um, apart from that, nothing else too too crazy like yeah Tyler Pyatt is a starter but I don't know if we're gonna take him um who else there are some other guys in here that I have scouted oh yeah Verdino could be elite I'm not sure yet I think he might be um Mahler is a massive goalie so I'm probably gonna end up taking him as our like goalie for this draft and apart from that Not too many other guarantees in here. Maybe LeBlanc. I've got him pinned. Um, Maybe Gagnon. Probably not McClement, but maybe. I don't know how bad the picks are going to get into the later rounds here, so we might end up taking McClement instead. And I think that's pretty much it. I've got Lamb and Steve's pinned here. Um, Some interesting five-year ETA players out of the O and QHL. So... So yeah, that's where we're at. But anyways, that's where we're going to wrap this one up. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to go down below, drop a like, subscribe, and hit notifications to never miss these uploads. And of course, make sure to leave comments. I love reading them, responding to you guys, and getting back to you. But that is going to be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. This is Daniel signing out, and until next time.